Hello, welcome back to the Blender Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I want to show you um, a few tricks you can do with Blender Armature in relation to how to turn bones into mesh using geometry nodes, but you need sphere chalk add-on in between. So it's a little bit unusual, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I create an armature and by default you have a single bone and that's fine. We're just going to quickly pull a little bit of bones here. Okay, so this is bone that I just extruded a couple of times. Uh, nothing special here, but I just going to turn this into mesh. I need to turn this into a mesh and why I didn't use polygon edge and skin modifier method. I think bond, bond method is a little bit more interesting. I'm going to show you. So this armature and I'm using sphere chop and I'm going to bring in armature nodes. So you can interpret the armature bones in at least there are two different ways. The easiest way is maybe using the head and the tail and look at the middle relative or you can use the bone matrix and the length of the bones. It's actually kind of um, really useful. Okay, so local bone matrix. This is actually looking at the bone, the, the edit bones, not the post bone. And this one looking at the, the length of the bone. So if we use something like a cylinder, very quickly plug this in. Okay, it's, uh, it's unhappy because we haven't selected the armature now. Okay, we have cylinder and we can adjust the, the radius. It's not really following uh, it is actually following the orientations. Let me actually switch the bone naming and make it in front. So if we are, I go back to edit mode and move the bones around a little bit. So like I said, bone is really interesting because you can it has certain, it has the hierarchy. So you can you can move the bones um, and it's gonna update if you are doing it in the post mode. Okay, so <clears throat> orientations is there we just need to make this off center so the cylinder is at the base of the bones and also the cylinder by default is in the z axis while the bones like to be in the x axis or something like that so we need to rewire the bones and We also need to plug the length of the bones into the height. So, okay, so Z, Z, X, okay. Now we have our bones that's generating the cylinder and it's updating in object mode. You can pull a little bit more bones. So this can be useful for modeling, <coughs> actually. So let's save this very quickly. So this is bone to mesh. Uh, like I said earlier, you can interpret this this way using cylinder. So we have like multiple cylinders now. You can have that or you can merge it into a single object. So that's uh, really handy. Let's do another way using UV connections. UV connections. Okay, UV connection is expecting beginning and ending of vertices or something like that. So we can use list zip. So we're gonna zip the head and the tail vector data and plug this into the vertices and we should have a result. Okay, <clears throat> it does. It does work. We might need to do some merging. OK, 
okay so that's important also if you want to merge the vertices but we already have the edges working and it's also merged into a single object at this point you can actually use skin modifiers etc or you can you can do subdivisions uh, I'm gonna show you like, like we have polygon edge now right and we can switch to geometry nodes here subdivide subdividing the polygon we can randomize the position point position vector add so we can do meet the meeting like that increase the subdivisions so this add thickness i think we can actually just use float oh we cannot we need to use vector and uh we need some kind of value and we we can use math multiplier this one multiply by minus one plug this into there plug this into minimum so we have control over the radius of the bones after we do this we can use point to volume volume to mesh so this will have uh, will give you like a control over the radius more or less but there it's equal size for all the uh, across the bones maybe we can fix that in the future somehow by piping the data from spectro for now i'm pretty happy with this okay this is one way we can kind of model our geometry now we can go back to armature we can select the bones by its age or by the beginning and by the ending i think if you are doing like a physical character you actually find bones very intuitive and if i'm not wrong because this is okay this is we have the bones um we can use post mode let's see how this thing updates okay this apparently it doesn't update that way a better way is perhaps if I duplicate polygon edge so the polygon edge here if we weld it together and we use skin modifier so this is another way you can try to recreate this but we could with a control with armature control since this is skin modifier i think it actually like to have a skin root mark for each one of them create amateur okay now we have amateur for each part of the bones and we can use the geometry nodes to turn this into a mess 
Damn it, do not. Okay, so it works. It's a little bit strange kind of workflow. But now, oops. We can animate this and it should update. I think I might have uh, made a mistake with the skin modifier or the, maybe I don't need to have weld. And the resolution here is too high. And the bone is actually separate. Okay, at this point. Um, I mentioned at some point like the the bones need to be merged. Maybe not this way. Maybe I should have removed double over here. Well, at least we understand that we can turn armature into a cylinder, right? And this cylinder is, of course, pretty useful also because you can just use a geometry modifier and turn it into a mesh. So it could be like the beginning of a skull. It's, it's more like a modeling tool. So here I I think I pose this model before, right? The pose doesn't work with spare top. So I'm gonna reset that. Instead we're gonna work in the edit mode. So in edit mode, if you move the bones, it's it doesn't really follow the hierarchy, unfortunately. Spectral doesn't have the post mode. It's only looking at the edit mode, however, so it's uh, unfortunate. However, you can you can actually use animation nodes to to read the post mode. All of these actually, if you if I save this and open my setup. So here I have uh, this dinosaur kangaroo that I created earlier. This one have the armature and with this setup anyway the we can basically use the edit modes to make a different character simply by moving these things around maybe with the symmetry on so these bones becoming like a tool to generate new mesh Okay, so if this is actually working. Interesting, the, the alpha is not generating anything. I'm just gonna grab the node 3 from the other file and now we have our character This guy is generated from the bones. I think it was the cylinder. And <clears throat> the 
let's see. This is the radius. And the cylinder. Okay, I think it's kind of nice. Switch to geometry nodes and let's adjust this a little bit. So I'm using subdivide and with this scattering of points, maybe I could randomize the radius a little bit more. Attribute randomize. Okay, it's randomized. Randomizing the position of the mesh a little bit. We can turn on adaptive. Let's give uh, more variations. But you can see now I have a different different mesh. I can apply this. So let's see. By manipulating the bones, I can create different character so each the each of the bones to generate new model so if we go back to this let's hide that as well So ideally, ideally, uh, the armature, the way we manipulate the armature is using the post mode, and then we grab that position. Otherwise, if we if we just using the edit mode, we don't have that kind of hierarchy, like a useful hierarchy that we can use. Although you can, you know, go to post mode and. You make changes. You can see here. Um, I can scale, scale the feet. You can see the hierarchy is super useful. Just to kind of randomize or create your character. Just make a different, make a different look. Make really he big head or big tail. Once you're happy with this, you can you can F3 apply apply pose as rest pose. So now the pose is the same as edit mode, and you just simply update it. Now we have a new feature character. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, just be careful if if, it's, if the arms gets too close, then it's gonna overlap. Doesn't look pretty good. So in a way, I, I wanna connect like I wanna use the bones to generate base mesh for the model. It's like skin modifier. However, with the bone, we have hierarchy, so we can control. A little bit better, like you know, like uh, when working with the bones, the if you increase the length of the bones, it's gonna get bigger, which is pretty interesting. Maybe not what you want, but still. Can be handy. There. Okay, so that's pretty much what I want to show you. We use Svertok as the link or the bridge to so that we we can have geometry based on the 
post uh, based on the armature bones and once we have the mesh we can kind of just point the volume volume to mesh just to make our base mesh for the character all right so thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye